On January 10, 1914, in the bustling streets of Shanghai, a terrifying incident took place that would etch itself into the annals of Chinese history. This event was the assassination of Xia Ruifang, the acclaimed director of the commercial press. At five o'clock in the afternoon, as he was leaving the company's headquarters on Henan Road, an assassin lay in wait and fired a shot that proved to be fatal. Xia, who was 43 years old at the time of his death, passed away at the hospital as a result of his injuries. He left behind a legacy that would be overshadowed by the mystery that surrounded his passing. Both the identity of the person who killed him and the reason for carrying out the murder continue to be a mystery, making it one of the most persistent mysteries that the Republic of China has yet to solve at this time. The Commercial Press It is essential to investigate the history of the commercial press in order to acquire an understanding of the significance of Xia's involvement and the following assassination. This publishing powerhouse became linked with modernism in China after it was established in 1897 by Xia, who was only 26 years old at the time for its establishment. The commercial press is widely recognized as China's first modern publishing enterprise despite the fact that it is not officially recognized as the country's first printing company. The adventure started off with a humble beginning, as Sia, a typesetter at a newspaper that was managed by the British, decided to quit his work because he was being mistreated. Together with three other business partners, he established the Commercial Press as a company that principally specializes in printing advertising leaflets. On the other hand, Zia's leadership, which was characterized by its vision, guided the corporation to greater heights. It issued a Chinese translation of an English language primer for Indian students in the year 1898, and in its first week of publication, it sold an astonishing 3,000 copies. The commercial press was able to buy cutting-edge printing machines from Japan thanks to the profits from this business, which marked a significant turning point in the historical development of the Chinese printing sector. It was the introduction of mechanized Gutenberg print machines by Western missionaries that played a major part in this change. These presses made it easier for the country to migrate to printing processes that were more consumer-oriented and industrialized. All the way down to the nomenclature that was employed by the commercial press, it was clear that they were receptive to Western influence. The Chinese name of the company, which incorporates the term printing firm, was adopted from the Japanese version of the Western equivalent. The company's success can be attributed in large part to its capacity to learn and adapt. Agreements with Japanese Investors in Collaboration Around the year 1902, the commercial press engaged into a significant cooperation with three directors from Kinkodo, which was the most prominent textbook publisher in Tokyo at the time. In the wake of a national controversy, these directors were forced to relocate to Shanghai, where they provided SIA's enterprise with a significant amount of knowledge as well as financial support. With an investment of the equivalent of 15,000 dollar, they were able to catapult the commercial press to the forefront of the textbook industry in China. The dynamics of this relationship, on the other hand, would undergo a seismic shift in 1914, only a few days before Xia's sad death. Xia, who may have been driven by nationalistic emotions, bought out his Japanese partners, severing the links that had formerly defined the success of the commercial press. On the same day that he passed away, an article was published in the Shenbao newspaper of Shanghai. The announcement stated that the commercial press was a firm entirely funded and run by countrymen and has already bought back all shares from foreigners. A number of different interpretations of Zia's murder were able to emerge as a result of the unexpected change in ownership arrangements. Is it possible that the Japanese partners he had fired were motivated by resentment? Or did nationalist feelings play a factor in the decision? There is also the possibility that competitor publishers, who are angry of Zia's engagement with foreigners, may have been the ones responsible for the commercial success. The mystery that surrounds Sia's sudden death is made much more intriguing by the questions that remain unanswered. The Chronicles of Zhang Yuanji The Chronicles of Zhang Yuanji, a two-volume biography of the renowned literati and Sia's successor, marked a significant turning point in the investigation into Xia Ruifang's assassination. Released by the commercial press in 1991, long after the memory of Sia's death had faded from the public consciousness, the biography claimed to be based on the writings of Zhang Yuanji himself. This literary work, ostensibly shedding light on the life and times of Xia's successor, took an unexpected and controversial turn by accusing Chen Qimei, a revolutionary Republican, of being responsible for Xia's death. The revelation injected new life into the long dormant investigation and electrified proponents of conspiracy theories. Prior to this revelation, 
The prevailing belief had been that the Japanese were the most likely perpetrators of Sia's assassination. This notion was supported by circumstantial evidence and a prevailing sense of patriotic history. However, the accusation against Chen Kimei opened up new avenues of inquiry, challenging the established narrative and prompting a re-evaluation of potential suspects. The release of the Chronicles of Zhang Yuanji not only provided a fresh perspective on Xia's assassination, but also ignited renewed interest in solving the mystery. The unexpected twist in the narrative added layers of complexity to an already enigmatic case, inviting further scrutiny and speculation into the motives and individuals behind the death of China's first publisher. Connections to revolutionary movements Chen Kimei, a member of Sun Yat-sen's inner circle which is seen as a pioneer for the Chinese Republic, discovered that he was not only involved in the murder of Xia, but also in the circumstances surrounding the deaths of other notable individuals. Following his leadership of the Nationalist Party to victory in the elections held in 1913, revolutionary leader Song Jiaoren was ultimately killed by gunfire at a railway station. Additionally, the governor of Zhejiang, Tao Chengjiang, was a victim of the accusations that surrounded Chen Qimei. During the year 1916, Chen himself was murdered, and it is possible that Yuan Shikai, the president of China and a relentless adversary of the Nationalist Party, was the one who ordered the murder. Changing alliances and power battles characterized the political landscape of the Republic of China, which was characterized by its complexity. There was a coincidence between Chen's possible involvement in Xia's murder and the revisionist viewpoints that were gaining traction in popular culture during the early 1990s. In addition to expanding beyond the politically secure settings of ancient Wuxia, television dramas and other forms of media also began to delve into the turbulent interbellum of the Opium Wars and the Japanese invasion. In particular, Shanghai took on traits of the Jiang Hu, which was a decadent yet dangerous underworld in which conspiracies and assassinations were considered to be everyday occurrences. Considerations of Revisionism and Their Legacy As narratives in popular culture progressed, so did people's perceptions of Xia Ruifang and the legacy he left behind. The anti-imperialism narrative's once patriotic and tragic hero was now viewed through a different prism than it had been in the past. Xia gained enemies as a result of his participation in safeguarding the interests of the commercial sector and stopping military governor Chen Qimei from stationing troops in Jiabei, which was the district in which the commercial press was situated. Bao Tianxiao and other people who were associated with Xia contributed an additional layer of intricacy to his character. Xia's readiness to take advantage of political gaps for the purpose of financial gain was described by Bao. In contrast to the idealized image of a patriotic entrepreneur, Sia's decision to publish forbidden literature in the early days of the commercial press, together with a savvy plan to avoid displaying the name and address of the printer, demonstrated a pragmatic and business-oriented side that contrasted with the image of a patriotic entrepreneur. In spite of the fact that the commercial press continues to support the Japanese account of Sia's murder, popular culture is increasingly leaning towards Chen Kimei's web of intrigue as the more compelling narrative. Through this interpretation, Sia is transformed from a heroic figure who is both patriotic and tragic into an archetype of a trickster. This places him in the same category as other persons who are entrepreneurial and at times brutal in the modern public's vision of the Republican Shanghai Jiang Hu. So guys, let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below. For more interesting content, give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more awesome content. Have a nice day, and I will see you in the next video.